Um, now, we heard about uh, Frogan's addresses. We have understood that there was a star sign in the middle, that it was international, and that it addressed the uh, Frogan sites. Well, now, let me jump into uh, the, the issue the, in, the, with the Frogan's technology. There is dot Frogan's that was uh, recently delegated by um, to OP3 FT by ICANN, and the program's addresses are not domain names. So why is it that there's this dot programs? Uh, maybe uh, this is because OP3 FT needs it, but I suppose Julie Laurent, who was here yesterday, will be uh, uh, best position to uh, tell you about it, because I'm personally, personally confused. So thank you, Julie, for clarifying the matter. <laughs> it's my pleasure, says Julie. So could you uh, rapidly uh, tell us about your role at OP3 FP? For, for, sorry if I repeat myself as some of you. My name is Julie Laurent. I joined the Progress um, Project some three and a half years ago, before which I was uh, working as a lawyer at the Paris Bar, I specialized in um, IT and digital law. I'm now in charge of um, the legal affairs for OP3 FP. Uh, team. My work consists essentially in uh, look, looking and um, drafting uh, all the um, legal documents of op 3 ft and, and in this capacity, I uh, was in charge of uh, uh, registering, uh, the filing this um, uh, Frogans project with ICANN. So before telling us about the dot Frogans, could you tell us a few words about um, uh, ICANN and the uh, the new GTLD uh, programs, these uh, GTLD are the first uh, top-level um, extensions. Yeah, a few words about uh, ICANN. I suppose it's important to set the stage. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, Sébastien Bachelet, who is the member of di uh, the board director of the ICANN, already spoke about this yesterday. ICANN is the Internet uh, uh, Corporation for um, Assigned Names and Numbers. It's a non-profit organization that was created in uh, 1998. Uh, from a legal point of view, it would be like a charity, an association, if you will. It's a um, California-based uh, private uh, non-profit organization. In fact, its major role is to see to it that the internet be secure and stable, and to mm, say it in a simple way, it's in charge of all the TNS, the um, management of the domain name systems. And um, on the internet, of course. Um, uh, traditionally, uh, if you wanted to register a domain name, there were only three options. You, you had the .com, the .net, and the .org. And then, uh, as the internet uh, evolved, there were new extensions added, the .bs, uh, uh, and, and, and the XXX more recently. And uh, within ICANN, and Stefan Angelda mentioned this earlier, from 2008, there was a group, a work group, that started what we call this new generic top-level domain program, that is, the new GTLDs. Uh, what is the purpose of this, in fact, is we'll tend to introduce in the root of the internet new names in, in, at the root of the internet. The idea also at the beginning was to be able to make the names more international. Here, for instance, you have an, an example in Korean that is a dot Samsung. Uh, of course, it was filed by Samsung, the, the company, which was to promote innovation. In fact, the program was um, launched in 2008, and we had, oh, it was possible until the 31st of May um, 2012 to file your application for these names. There were some uh, 1,930 uh, applications filed out of these uh, 1,930. Uh, I must check my numbers, sorry. Only 10% of these uh, domain names uh, in international characters. What Wales said earlier is that in the, the domain names it does not work well because these are not real uh, international characters. This is why there were so 
few uh, applications outside the Latin alphabet. So out of the 1930 uh, applications, only uh, 1,481 were approved. I wrote approved, but in fact, it's applications that went through all the way to the final stage. They haven't been finally approved yet. And as of uh, 20, 22 May, 22nd of May, there were 276 GTLDs that were delegated by account. So now if you do type Nick Dot uh, and whatever the name here, um, you, these are delegated GTLDs, and you will see uh, further to the left that you have the Dot programs, which was uh, recently delegated. Um, what's important to bear in mind is that out of the 276 uh, applications that have uh, been awarded a delegation, uh, uh, 270 are American and three only are French. And out of these uh, 276, 139 are in fact filed by the same um, uh, uh, company, which is the Donuts Consortium. Um, thank you, Julie. Um, so getting back to the dot frogans, which is uh, there in the middle, why did OP3FT ask uh, uh, for a delegation from ICANN? What is the, the purpose? What is the uh, use? Uh, uh, and in what sense would it be different from the dot Paris, dot London, or whatever? So, I tried to um, show you the various types of GTLDs, existing GTLDs. You see that they are uh, classified into four major categories. You have the generic extensions, clothing, camera, voyage. Then you have the dot brands, which are the brand extensions. Then you have the geographical extensions, uh, Berlin, Paris, London. Then you have the community um, uh, extensions. Only three have had uh, have received the delegation: Horsegall and Zhengwu in Chinese. And right all the way to the right, you have dot frogs, and which stands apart. And why is it apart? It could have been actually um, classed with the, the dot brands because Frogans is uh, the brand of OP3F3, and uh, which has been uh, filed in um, 85 countries. But it's not only. Uh, or not at all to protect our brand name that we uh, filed uh, this application. In fact, we are not uh, a dot brand, as I will try and tell you in a few minutes. The dot frogans, um, what will it not be used for? <laughs> in fact, it will not be used to create um, creative names for websites, for instance. It will not be used to create a space for communication uh, with the users of the Frogans technology. No, no, no. In fact, it will be used to secure the deployment of the Frogans layer that we told you about yesterday and that um, Alexi told you about again today. That is the layer that we're currently introducing with Frogans technology. And our uh, dot Frogans will help us um, name machines, servers, in particular the servers that will be uh, used for uh, the resolution of fro uh, ad Frogans addresses. So it's a purely technical uh, purpose. This is why we stand apart. All right, but we're not saying that uh, we're not talking about a domain name. We're talking about a new GTLD for technical usage. And I know that uh, filing a, uh, a dossier with ICANN uh, is quite expensive. And yes, it's uh, dot frogans. Um, did cost a lot of money, not only money, also time. It was uh, time consuming because uh, this uh, application, this uh, case, we started working with Stefan, uh, as he reminded us in his introduction since 2010. We started uh, preparing the case uh, with a clinic in 2011, and we uh, were given the delegation in 2014. So in two and a half years of 
uh, uh, strenuous work with, uh, and in terms of money, also it was quite expensive because the uh, filing fees is just to, it's uh, 185 thousand dollars US dollars, let alone uh, the fees of providers and other players involved in preparing the case. So why investing so much money for a non-profit making? organization simple reason is that uh, one of our main missions missions is the security of the users of the program technology so it was worth investing that much because now op3ft can open an environment that is secure for all of its users in particular thanks to this dot programs thank you julie so an investment for the security of the users of the program technology um, uh, allow me to uh, add a few points. The fact that we have only a technical usage of this is very important. Uh, these um, small type of uh, centers, uh, the three consequences is that OP3FT will be the one and only uh, holder of all the domain names and the dot programs, which means that we are not selling domain names and no one can come up to see us. Well, you can come and I say, I would like a dot programs and I will tell you, no, you cannot have a dot programs because we are the only holders and um, parties entitled to use it. And also we'll have a very limited number of domain names precisely because we only use it for technical reasons. Uh, therefore, we have a limited number of uh, domain names. But what's important to understand is that there won't be any other holders, uh, beneficiaries of the dot programs outside OP3FT, but there will be uh, dot programs domain names. Yes, there will be domain names in dot programs, but what are they used for? These are the domain names. As you can see, there aren't many of them, only five. They have been activated. They were activated on 24th of April, quite recently, in 2014. And to the, the far left, you will uh, recognize the Fragrance Player logo. You have the two domain names. First is get.frogans will be the site where all the users will be able to download uh, Frogs Player. So this site we're fully um, master of, our owner, so when the user connects to the site, they're sure not to be mm, dragged on to anywhere else. It will be the site of Frogs Player. Second domain name that will be used for Frogs Player. <coughs> which is not associated with a website, there will not be a web page behind this. And in fact, it's just machines in our name. It's fpu.frogans, which will be used for updates uh, of Frogans Player. Another two uh, domain names, nick.frogans and knock.frogans, which actually are like domain names that allow us to uh, manage uh, the dot programs from a technical point of view. And uh, for dot programs, we, we put a web page that gives all the detail uh, um, about what I'm telling you with the various, uh, the, the history and the legal documents associated with dot programs, the link to the who is of dot program, which is a site that is uh, compulsory, uh, has been made compulsory by ICANN. And as I said earlier, you have the famous, uh, uh, you know, the domain names that will be activated to secure the um, uh, Frogans layer will be found on fcr.frogans. So you see this breaks down into another two uh, parts, and these are, are not quite sites. They are domain names of second and fourth, third and fourth level to uh, handle the servers like the FNS for Frogan's network system and you also have all these services that will be offered by the um, uh, Frogan's core uh, registry addressing services and registration services that Romwald will be telling you about later on that are accessible to um, FCR account administrators. So the whole um, Frogan's uh, technology is accessible through 
either the, these sites or these services that use the uh, .frovens domain name that are fully secure. Thank you, Julie. If I want a Frogan site, no need to ask for my name, Jean Emmanuel Frogans. I need to go and see Romuald, who will explain to me how I can have my Frogans star Jean Emmanuel. Yes. We spoke about the relations between Rocket 3FT and ICANN, but to implement a GTLD, the dot foregrounds would call for interactions with other stakeholders. Absolutely. To conclude, I'd just like to give you a brief overview of the contractual links that the OP3FT has with the various players around that four GANs. We have ICANN, first of all, with whom we signed a registry agreement. We have the AFI, AFNIC, with whom we signed an, an agreement as a technical operator. We work with them every day to keep that four GANs up and running, because these are the ones who, technically speaking, make the that four GANs work. But uh, Matthew, uh, they will tell you more about that in just a few moments. We also save it every day with a third-party escrow, a data escrow. And we signed an agreement with the English company, NCC Group. And we also have set up a preferred partnership with the company Systonic, which is the registrar of that programs. Because at some point in time, we have to go through a registrar to register our domain names. There you have it, Jean Emmanuel, the four bodies revolving around us for that four guns to run. Thank you, Julie. You said it. We're working every day at OP3FT with AFNIC for implementing that four grants. Tonight we're fortunate because Matthew Fay, CEO of AFNIC, is here to say a few words about what the AFNIC has been doing and how that four grants operates admirably. Good evening, Matthew, and thank you so much. Good evening. Good evening, Mathieu Veil. As I said, you are the CEO of AFNIC. For those of you who are not familiar with this body, could you describe it to us in just a few words? Well, AFNIC is historically known to be the domain name manager for .fr, but we have the operational management as well of various other first-level domains for France. Historically, .re for Ile de la Réunion, Wallace and Fortuna as well, but mainly we manage .fr, meaning administratively we attribute the names to the registry, registrars we spoke of earlier, some in this room, but also technical management. It's an integrated model where we are the operators of a technical infrastructure so that constantly any user who asks for access to a domain name in that file can be directed to the right resource, an email address, a website, or other purposes in the future. Thank you. As Julie pointed out, OP3FT is delighted to be able to benefit from the technical and operational experience at AFNIC for managing dot .forgans. But it's not the only new GTLD that's amongst your attributions. How is AFNI, how did it become a stakeholder in this program for the new GTLD initiated by ICANN? And how does it carry out the extensions to new extensions, so to speak? Am I using the same word twice? Well, there are several difficult words in our line of business. You have extensions and domain, which are quite difficult not to use. I'd like to come back to some historical facts to answer that question. AFNIC was the, has been the manager of DATEFA for about 10 years now, when the new GTLT programs appeared, as Stefan 
pointed out earlier, Stefan van Gelder. We had a meeting of ICANN in Paris in 2008 when ICANN announced that that's it. The new extensions are for tomorrow. Very quickly, at the time, we were the talk of the town in the business magazine, saying that in a year or two, that Paris will be a reality. They even spoke about that log at the time. So there's a lot of talk about that. And as an operator of registers for .fr, we wondered, we wondered about our fundamental terms of reference. Afnik is a non-profit making uh, co company under French law. It came from the National Laboratories for Computer Science. It had benefit from the legacy of the internet. It's amongst its teams that the first developments for the internet took place in France in the middle of the 80s. And our in terms of reference consist in furthering the development of internet in France by doing three things that are complementary. First of all, offer services that are secure and stable. This is why we operate our own infrastructures in France, mainly, most of them, and security is at the heart of our business. There are 2,700 domain names in Datafar, all of the French government sites, a certain number of high traffic business sites. If we were to fail in our mission, the inf there are infrastructure challenges, infrastructure uh, issues that could be raised when we had problems with some of our counterparts in some countries, a good portion of the internet no longer worked. So it's a very important security issue linked to the needs for an operator such as OP3FT. The first point there for security. Secondly, and this is our INRIA legacy as a research laboratory, to promote the emergence of innovation. We like to innovate at AFNIC to launch new services, and we do so whenever we can. But our terms of reference is broader to be a platform for the emergence of new usages. With the new GTLDs, there's really a lot to be done in terms of using domain names. We are present on the five French local authorities involved in the new extensions. Paris, Brittany, with a citizen-based movement, Aquitaine, Corsica, and Alsace. So these are new things to uh, create value in territories, leverage territories to bring out new needs. And the brands themselves, there's a lot to be built in terms of what they want to do with the dot aquarelle, total or SNCF, and there's a lot of potential for use. And this is why we're motivated to do it. A third important point in our terms of reference after security and promoting innovation is patriotism. We said it, and Julie said it earlier, the domain name sector is dominated by the Americans. In statistics, the new extension to Luxembourg uh, covers a good portion because Amazon uh, made all of these applications from Luxembourg. So amongst the Europeans, the French are well positioned. We were present for the new extensions, and that's a part of our terms of reference, not to promote innovation. And as Julie said very well here for OP3FT, this is a use of domain names for something that goes beyond the current use of domain names. And for us, it is extremely important because it's innovative and we have an opportunity around French players with that being outrageously patriotic to create global leaders. And this is our ambition. And this is the mission that was passed on to us by the public authorities and the members who are the members of the association, and anyone can join our association anytime. I was a bit lengthy, but that explains why for us it was totally logical to take part in opening things up. And this is why we were it was perfectly logical and interesting for us, and we learned a lot in contact with the OP3FT, and that was one of our objectives as well. 
to embark on this adventure, that programs, which will now continue with the launch of the technology itself. Thank you so much, Mathieu Vey, for answering my questions. I'd like to thank the AFNIC to, for helping OP3FT to operate that programs. Do we have any questions about that programs? Well, I'd like to know, Kabi at OP3FT, a lawyer, and not just there to pass the slides. Let's just point that out. Thank you. I'm not sure I understand how that forecast is used. I believe that our publishers haven't really made the distinction because that forecast isn't used for selling forecast addresses. I would like to understand, what do you do in that respect? If it's to ensure security, or just the back-end registry for that programs precisely? Have you understood my question? With the two components in your question, what does the afternoon do concretely for that programs? What it does concretely at AFNIC we interact with OP3FT to know what are the names that are registered or not. We provide an interface so that through a registrar, we can register or in the future register a fifth domain name or to change the technical characteristics. That's the first point. Secondly, we operate an infrastructure enabling these domain names to be used. And any user or Frogan's player, wherever they are around the world, when they call a, that Frogan's domain name, the user is switched in a few milliseconds to the right resource, which is what the OP3FT signed, assigned to that domain name. It's as simple as that, I would say. And then you have the interactions with ICANN, surveillance, monitoring the infrastructure, which is important, too. And here, I'm not better positioned to describe how it is used by players and the layers above. I'm referring to that programs. Julie or Alexi are better placed than I am. But I imagine that they will be used without the user realizing it quite frequently. So it must work. Otherwise, it's a system component that's not visible by the user. But if it doesn't work, or if the quality of service declines, it can deteriorate the entire user experience and the entire system may stop working. So we are a, a component for security and stability in this mechanism. And this is what domain names are there for. The domain name system as it is used today is precisely for switching to make sure that it works all the time. And this is why our ex expertise in .fr management is useful for OP3FT, and it will be less visible for users than if and for the dot .paris when we were to sell tourfl.paris, eiffeltower.paris. But it must work. If it doesn't work, I believe that everything falls apart. Well, you are right, and even without becoming technical, I believe that users will see it. If only because get.forgan is used for downloading Forgan's player, each time a user will want to download and release a Forgan's player, they'll have to resolve the Forgan's address get.forgan's. And therefore, if they can't, unfortunately, it would be Avnik's fault, but it won't happen. Because the dot .forgan's is very well cabled. Thank you so much. Thank you. The CEO of AFNIC, Matthew Vale.